It's taught in schools everywhere, but controversy still abounds. Evolution, the idea popularized by Charles Darwin, has had a long uphill battle since its conception. Battling deeply held religious belief, evolution was slowly accepted into modern schooling. However, evolution is not yet so stalwart in the public eye. It has the scientific consensus, but it still must prove itself against creationism. This is What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. I think we're going to talk about uh, basically what evolution is, uh, some of the opposition to evolution that we've had in our modern society, and some misconceptions about evolution that yeah. are prevalent even among even among people who know a lot about evolution. Th- there's a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of weird, funny business going around about evolution. Some people don't even understand how it happens. So we're yeah. here to clear it up, basically. Yeah, we're here to clear the air for you. You'll see it clear after this. So first, what is evolution? It's simply the change of a species over generations. So evolution doesn't happen on an individual scale. It happens over the course of generations. And the reason why that is, is because genetics change. You know, you're not the same, you're not, you don't have the same genetics as your father. Your father doesn't have the same genetics as his father and so on. Evolution is all about small changes in the genetics over time. Uh, It's, it's, it's not something that has a, a direction per se. It's not something that is like, oh, evolution is picking this it's just you roll the dice and if and if it works it works and you can copulate and keep going on and if it doesn't work and you die then you're out of the gene pool and we don't even need to worry about you anymore and so that kind of leads us to misconception number number one that is that evolution has a goal now it's it's true that evolution selects for some species that are you could say are better fitted to their environment yeah. that's that's what people mean by survival of the fittest which isn't exactly a perfect description of evolution or or what's called natural selection. But basically, the whole idea is that species that are better fitted, better suited to uh, adapt and live in their environments are the ones that are able to reproduce, and those are the ones that pass on their genes. Yeah. But this doesn't mean that species have a goal or they're traveling in a direction. No, absolutely not. Yeah, we're all we're all just basically rolling the dice. No, there's no absolutely no direction. It's it's as silly say, saying saying that evolution has a direction is sort of like saying, oh well, a, a river sort of erodes this rock, so that means that the rock erosion has a goal and a direction. No, not really. It's just a natural process. Right. It's just a natural process that happens to happen because it happens because of some rules right but that doesn't yeah. mean that the river is deciding to go someplace you know uh, yeah absolutely and I, I know what you're saying <laughs> I don't so, know if they do, but I know what you're saying. So w- some of the largest public os- opposition to evolution has been, has been from the religious right. And basically, it's a very popular view. Gallup poll says that 42% of Americans believe that the world was created less than 10,000 years ago, and that um, basically God created humans in their current form. Yeah. And, and that we haven't evolved through any process. And uh, assuming that, that means four out of ten people listening already believe that so we're already sort of doing an uphill battle here um trying to talk about evolution but you know it's just scientifically supported so even though evolution isn't evolution isn't directly related to the age of the earth but for some reason whenever people are talking about evolution it always comes up whether the world is billions of years old or whether it's 10,000 years old. Yeah. Now, uh, keep in mind, regardless of whether it's either, evolution still happens because as we defined it, evolution is simply the changing of a species over time. And humans have changed in the last 10,000 years. <laughs> yeah, that is, it, that, right. It, so evolution still occurs even if you don't believe that we evolved from our ancestors billions of years ago. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is viruses still mutate. The medical community assumes that evolution happens because if they didn't assume that, then they wouldn't change the vaccines every year. They they know that vaccines change due to natural selection and evolution, so they must adjust for that. They, in fact, there's people that try to predict what the uh, what viruses will change to in order to anticipate and create a new vaccine. Yeah, it's, it's honestly sort of odd to me that people still deny that evolution exists because it's right in front of our eyes. Like, the the medical community would be vastly different if evolution didn't exist or if evolution was, you know, just a theory, you know, in quotation marks. 
Um, so, uh, when people say evolution is just a theory, uh, for one, I'm not, I'm not really sure what they're talking about because the theory of gravitation is just a theory yeah, and, you know, germ theory is just a theory. But for so, some reason, people, people like to accept, you know, gravity because, you know, keeps you rooted, like to accept germ theory, but for some reason, uh, evolutionary theory, people are just, they don't, they don't like it. I don't know. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a fundamental misunderstanding of what a theory is. A theory is simply an explanation. Explanation, or in in scientific terms, it's a well grounded explanation yeah. for events. A theory so, is backed up by evidence. You don't have a theory that's just out of the blue. You know, like I think Mars is made of chocolate bars or something. You know, that's right. That's not a scientific yeah, theory. No, that that's might be a your own process. <laughs> it might be your own personal theory, and it's a bad one. Yeah, but that, it's it, not a scientific theory. I wouldn't even call it a theory. That's just a hypothesis, a way left way. That I mean, that's, uh, well, that's, that's just like a claim. Yeah. Left field. You know, hypothesis. Well, okay, so put in, when we're comparing it to different theories, let's say the theory of gravitation. That isn't simply that things fall out of the sky. I mean, it might be, but that's simply something that we observe, right? Yeah. The theory of gravitation is specifically the equations that describe how things fall out of the air. You know, Newton, Newton was the first one to come up with a theory of gravity. It was refined by Einstein later. And germ theory. We used to think uh, a whole host of different things about what causes disease. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it used to be demons. And then yeah, we went through some crazy times more, with uh, medicine. Uh, more recently, there was miasma theory, which by more recently, I mean like the 19th century. Yeah, where so, we're not talking like yesterday, some doctor was like, hey, I got this theory about miasma. <laughs> you know? Right. So that that was basically that disease was caused by poisonous, invisible clouds that spread through the air. And that was basically to explain how disease diseases can transfer from one person to another. But the reason why we accept germ theory nowadays is because we've observed it directly, yeah. in the same way that we observe evolution directly. And I, I mean, when people talk about evolution, they're usually talking about historically uh, evolution, you know, species evolving to get to their her current state, you know, which yeah. is which more ha has to do with origins than the simple act of evolution yeah, itself. I think people misunderstand what they're fighting against when they say, oh, you shouldn't teach evolution. Um, because they're they're believing in creationism, right? Uh, usually, and they're they're saying, "Oh, we were created by God ten thousand years ago." This uh, evolution theory, talking about how we evolved from uh, proto humans and apes, that's all. It's all hogwash. What are you talking about? Uh, God created us, and it. I mean, they they can they can believe that, but that doesn't mean evolution doesn't still happen. Like you you don't have to. I, you can, you can throw away the origin if, if you, if you'd like and say, oh, we, we were created 10,000 years ago, but that doesn't change the fact that there's still evolution happening. That still works with your worldview, you know? Oh yeah, sure. Which I've heard, I've heard some responses to this. Some people say that, oh, well, that's just the difference between micro and macro evolution, which is a gross misunderstanding of what yeah. biologists will tell you, because no biologist is going to tell you that there's a difference between mi micro and macro evolution. Yeah. Uh, micro evolution, uh, on the whole, it's just small changes in a species. And for every small change over, over the course of millennia and ultimately millions of years, that's going to equal a large change. Yeah. It's It's like... You have to, you have to step. You have to, you have to take every step to walk a mile, but that doesn't mean walking a mile is different from, from walking a few steps. It's just a longer drawn out version of the same thing. That's true. That's true. Now, even though that, even though evolution itself doesn't really talk a lot about origins, like how, how life started, uh, of course, it always gets brought up in the debate, like I said before, but mm -hmm. I, I think then we should spend some time explaining why exactly we do think that the world is more than 10,000 years old. And That is an important caveat, yeah. So uh, one of the most important ways that we date uh, biological material, it's not, it's not accurate up to a point, but it is accurate for material that's over 10,000 years old, of mm -hmm. course. It's called carbon radioactive dating. And it's basically, you take... Um, it, Carbon has stable isotopes, carbon-12 and carbon-13, and that's that's based on the number of neutrons it has in its uh, nucleus. But carbon-14 isn't stable. It's radioactive, and it decays, I think, every, every 6,500 years or so. What I mean by decay is that it enters a half-life. It means that it has half the material as it did before. So how do we, how do we measure this? How, how do we determine how old something is using this method? The way it works is that when cosmic rays enter the atmosphere... 
it uh, a whole bunch of chemical reactions happen in the upper troposphere that cause carbon fourteen to to spawn. I mean, yeah. I guess spawn isn't the right word. They spawn. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's created. But the the whole idea is, I mean, the whole idea that how it works is carbon fourteen is created at a constant rate in the upper atmosphere, and then it combines with oxygen, creating CO two. Well, I think first carbon monoxide and then CO two, and the CO two is about the same chemically as the other CO2 in the atmosphere. So it gets mixed. Uh, uh, it gets mixed evenly without the atmo- within the atmosphere. Yeah. And life, is, especially plants, they consume carbon dioxide in order to exist. That's why trees don't actually get their... Most of the nutrients is not from the ground. That's yeah. why you don't see a hole around a tree. <laughs> You, exactly. They actually they actually get most of their mass from the air and ultimately carbon dioxide. So when a tree dies, it has all of that carbon dioxide still in there, which which is just carbon. That's why we're carbon based organisms. Mm-hmm. And there's still a certain percentage of carbon-14 still in the living tree. Yeah, that you'd expect to see from a tree just dead. Yes, so a tree that just died would have the same amount of carbon-14 as there is in the atmosphere. But a tree that died 100 years ago will have slightly less carbon-14 because it would have decayed. That's The half-life is 6,500 years. Now, using math... All you need to do is find some fossil or some biological remnant and basically test to see how much carbon-14 mm. there is in it. And you, you, this isn't useful just for plants because animals eat plants and then other animals will eat the animals that ate the plants. So this carbon-14 sort of gets propagated around the environment, you know? Yes, so carbon is in all life, not just plants. Plants yeah. might be the one that initially consume it. That's why they're, that's why they're primary consumers. Not primary consumers. What is it called? Autotrophs? Yeah, I don't know. Something, something like that. They're I autotrophs, they so they don't, they don't consume anything uh, themselves, but other organisms consume plants, and ha- that's how they get the carbon fourteen, and that's why we can date almost any organism in the in the environment using this method. And you were right about that, by the way. They are autotrophs. Good on that one. Thank you. Good vocabulary. That's good. <laughs> And while we're talking about origins, a lot of people have this specific misconception that, oh, there's still monkeys. How did we come from monkeys? Right. This is, this is kind of like a one liner. And uh, once again, it shows a misunderstanding of uh, evolution. It's, it's the equivalent of someone bringing a snowball to the Senate floor and being like, see, global warming doesn't exist and throwing it around. Yeah, that's, that's it's, basically what that argument is. Okay, but we need to explain why it's why it's not a good response yeah. to anyone out there saying, "Ha, ah, they finally mentioned it. This is going to bring them down." No, no. Okay, I'm the sorry. thing is, if you were taught that we evolved from monkeys or that we evolved from apes or something, then you were taught wrong information. Absolutely wrong. That person lied to you. <laughs> that person did not know what they were talking about, or purposely lied to you. I don't know which. Yeah. But other. Th- no, the thing is, is. All life on Earth right now has a common ancestor. It, no, no species just evolves from some other species on the planet at the moment. Yeah. Because remember, species evolving is a change in the organism over generations. It doesn't mean change from one organism to the other. Yeah. You don't suddenly evolve into a fish one day. And it, 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 an important caveat as well, we sort of subjectively say when things have evolved enough to be a new organism, but basically it's been essentially the same strain of an organism over time. It just slowly changes, and at one point we're like, okay, that's different enough to be a different animal, I guess. Right. The, the line between species is actually very complicated yeah. right? because there's there's no true definitive biological definition of species, believe it or not, because you could say things like, oh, a species is when uh, two organisms can reproduce with each other, right? And right. for one, that doesn't, that doesn't classify bacteria because bacteria pr- reproduce asexually, so how do you know whether two species are, th- or two bacteria are the same species? Yeah. And for two, um, species, different species do actually crossbreed and uh, a lot and so then people will say ah but they don't produce fertile offspring but actually we did produce fertile offspring with uh with neanderthals so it isn't it isn't quite you know that's the thing we don't have a perfect definition for what species is so that's what makes it hard to imagine what speciation is yeah but because there are these big broad categories where we need we need to separate them but it's really hard to create an objective definition for separation so we just separate them and then go from there. 
Really, there's, it's more of, we kind of create the categories and then anything that kind of subjectively falls into a species, then we, we say that's a species. Yeah. This is What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. So, so moving on from there, how does it all relate to the, oh, we, we didn't come from monkeys because monkeys are still here thing? Um, they're related to us because they came from the same proto-human monkey. Their common ancestor was not as long ago as some common ancestors. For example, our common ancestors with lizards was many millions of years ago. Right. Whereas our common ancestor with, uh, modern day monkeys or apes was probably uh, not that long ago. I mean, on an evolutionary scale, it was, it was still probably more than a million years ago, but it wasn't, Absolutely. it wasn't as long as the common ancestors, the common ancestor between lizards or, I mean, even trees, since, uh, of course, all life yeah. on earth has a common ancestor. W- whenever someone brings that up, whenever someone is saying, oh, we can't have evolved from apes because they're still here, keep in mind, we did not evolve from apes. Apes and humans split off from one common ancestor. We just sort of, evolved in different directions uh the random mutations just happened to take uh two paths is and basically how if, it works if you want to since that's a one-liner you know if we didn't evolve from monkeys then how are they st- or if we did evolve from monkeys then how are they still here you can respond with a one-liner as well if you evolved from your cousin why is your cousin still here it's, <laughs> it's literally the same thing you see your cousin your cousin and you share a common ancestor but that doesn't mean that you evolved from your cousin oh, so it's it's oh actually God. it actually is the same thing on a biological scale just that our, the common ancestor between us and monkeys are just longer ago and we've we've been we've been digging into creationists uh, a little bit here you know just sort of throwing facts all all in their direction but don't you believers in evolution think we're done with you either you're still wrong about evolution you're not off the hook <laughs> yeah you're there's still stuff you need to know Here's another misconception about evolution. The idea that we're not evolving right now as a species. Now, this one, I mean, it intuitively makes sense. In the past, uh, survival of the fittest meant that if you uh, weren't very strong, then you might get killed by someone else, or that you might die of a disease when you're really young. You know, you, you yeah. basically, the genetics that you had, if you were born with bad eyesight, then that might have seriously hindered your ability to survive and nowadays it doesn't but that's that's different from not evolving that's simply a change in evolutionary pressure you see all we said in the beginning evolution was is just change in a species over generations and evolution happens by chance keep that in mind that's very important to remember evolution doesn't have a goal it happens by chance and chance happens to make good stuff yes chance caused by mutations in genetics you know Mm -hmm. like like we said earlier, you're not exactly the same as your parents. So the thing is, is as long as humans keep reproducing, then we're just going to keep evolving because our our children are not going to be exactly identical as, as us. Now, sure, you could say, oh, well, well, then maybe we're evolving under that definition, but there's no natural selection. And that's false because, for one, people still die as a child. Yeah. The people... only time natural selection stops is when we stop death. And that is that is way off in the future. Well, not even that. No, it's not It's not about whether you stop death. It's about whether you stop certain people from reproducing. Oh, and I'm, I'm not even talking about, like, institutionalized or, you know, people being born sterile, sterile or anything. It, people choose nowadays to be child-free. People choose not to have children. That's a form of natural selection because yeah. then their genes won't get to survive, whereas the people that said, hey, no, I, I want a children, then their genes will. I That's... want a children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry, I just had to point that out. That was funny. But I feel another more simpler way to go about it is some people think of evolution as something that happened in the past. You know, like so some people are thinking of evolution as how we got here. That is both true and untrue. It is how we got here, but evolution isn't over. It's everything is still evolving. Everything is still reproducing. The dice of fate are still rolling around everywhere, getting all up in everybody's business. That <laughs> That's still happening today. Yeah, as an analogy, it's kind of like saying the laws of physics. You know, the the laws of physics have got us to where we were. The solar system formed due to the, due to gravity. Every, uh, I mean, the Earth formed due to gravity and the laws of physics, and everything, it, pretty much everything you look around, formed due to the laws of physics. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's not still happening. It's it's just as apparent now as it was ten billion years ago. Yeah, gravity didn't, you know, dust off its hands and say, "Oh, that's it for me. Made this planet." 
now I'm done. I'm done being gravity. We're still rooted to the planet, just as evolution is still keeping us rolling forward and changing around. And so, of course, we've kind of been dancing around the issue of origins this entire time. Yeah, so maybe uh, maybe we should go into and explain a bit of the origins of the universe anyway. Because really, when people talk about whether the universe was created 10,000 years ago or whether evolution happens, they're really talking about, you know, what created us. Yeah. And, and it's a big question. It's been asked for as long as humanity has been asking. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. And, of course, we should obviously preface this with no one knows. Yeah. It, it, even even someone who's dedicated their life to the Big Bang Theory will tell you no clue. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, they, they have very good observations. They have theories. Yeah. But they don't... I guess no clue is the wrong answer. They, they, they have a clue. They have a clue. But it's never going to be a full answer. It'll always be open for interpretation, and it'll always be something that people will um, basically choose with their personal beliefs. And of course, I uh, we- and it'll always go further back because we. I don't think I don't think science will ever really push us to it to the point where we know what created the universe, for example, because. Yeah. You know, how can you observe something outside the universe that created the universe? It's Especially not... when we're already having so much trouble piercing cosmic background radiation. We just can't get past even that light, much less see outside the light. Right. So as much as I hate to say it, there are some things about the origins of us and the universe that are outside the realm of science. And yeah. that we can never one we can never discover one day that something outside the universe created the universe. That would be impossible. Yeah, that's 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 an important uh that's an important idea in science you will never know is is it's the important thing to go into knowing but we can know a lot about the universe itself because we're living in it so one of the things is uh there are a few misconceptions about the big bang Mm -hmm. now the big bang wasn't a gigantic explosion that everything kind of just spawned out of yeah it wasn't like a flash of light then like a poof and it just moved out and suddenly we had the universe nope no, really, in in more technical terms, the Big Bang was just the evolution or expansion of the universe, because yeah. th- the universe is expanding right now. And what I mean by expanding is not necessarily getting larger, it's just that things are getting further apart from each other. Yeah. Now, what do, and what do I mean by that? I- it's sort of odd. The universe, when we talk about the universe expanding, we're not saying everything is, like, stretching and we're getting... The universe is expanding into itself, which is very odd to explain. I think you were about to do it. It's it, well, it's a very odd thing to explain because it's it's not the same type of expansion that you'd see in ordinary everyday. In ordinary everyday, we kind of think of explosions as a good analogy a- analogy for the Big Bang, and that's why it was why it was named the Big Bang. Yeah. But the universe itself has nothing to expand into. You see, if you kind of thought it was a big explosion, then what would everything be traveling into? Would it just be more empty space if it? was then wouldn't that already be the universe anyway yeah it the big bang think about it as everything was com was compressed right everything was very dense and that means there was a lot of a lot of light at the very um, beginning of the universe a lot of energy yeah a lot a lot of energy creates a lot of light and that's what when people talk about cosmic background radiation that's what they're talking about we can't see past that light um and then it just sort of expanded i think actually its expansion is accelerating so it's not relatively quickly but it expanded there was a point of inflation at the beginning of the universe uh, more recently, this is, this is really kind of off point, but yes, it is, ex- it is accelerating in its expansion due to dark energy. Which, by the way, in, in physics, whenever something's like dark energy or dark matter, that just means we don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh. But, I mean, there's a lot of unknowns. We're not physicists. We're not gonna tell you, uh, too technical. This is just what we've read. But yeah. that's, that's essentially it. That's clearing up some misconceptions about the Big Bang. It's just the expansion of the universe. It doesn't, it doesn't describe the origins. So if a creationist tells you that the Big Bang didn't happen because how could the entire universe be created by an explosion? You could just calmly tell them that's not what the physicists think. And of course, we don't really yeah. know what the origins of the whole universe are. We don't we don't actually really even know what the origins of life are at this point. There are some theories, but none of them are too definitive. Basically, creationism is maybe not so not so supported, but that doesn't mean God's out of the equation. Right, they're separate issues. Anyway, this has been What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on 
KOWL 1490, The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. Goodbye.